In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, use a duplex reticle in your scope to determine the range to your target. Um, for example, this is a red field tracker scope. It's a variable scope from 3 to 9. It uh, does not have an adjustable objective. So to be clear, what we're talking about when we're talking about a duplex reticle is when you look through the scope you see the crosshairs are thick and thin. Thick and thin. That's what a duplex reticle is. This discussion about using the uh, reticle to find a range of a target, uh, we're going to be specifically talking about scopes that are second focal plane scopes or rear focal plane scopes. What that means is that when you zoom the variable power ring, the reticle size stays the same. The reticle size does not change as you zoom the magnification. That's what a second focal plane scope is. That's what we're talking about in this case. Now sometimes people think that with an adjustable objective scope you can use the uh, adjustable objective to determine a range. Uh, you, you can to a certain extent but it's very crude and uh, I don't know if you can see it here but the difference between a hundred and 200 yards is a very small difference and it's much more accurate to use the duplex reticle in the scope to determine your range rather than the ob adjustable objective. So we're going to be using the fact that as you change the magnification of the scope these reticle, the reticle size does not change in your field of view and we can use the distance between here and the center or between here point to point uh, we can calibrate that then use it as a range finder and I'm going to show you how to do that calibration the process we're going to use uh, to calibrate our scope our duplex reticle is to use the distance from the point of one crosshair to the point of the other or from the point of one crosshair to the center of the fine crosshairs it really depends upon what you're measuring and which works out better for you uh, we could calibrate it for either situation what we're talking about is putting this point on a target at 100 yards and putting this point at a target on at 100 yards and reading the value of that distance what we're going to be talking about in this calibration exercise is really this formula. Uh, this formula is R equals the range 100 times the height of the target in inches. The divided by S is the subtension value which we'll talk about. Also divided by N, the number of subtensions. So this is the general formula that we will be using. We're not going to get into the, the math, the fancy math about how that's derived or anything. Um, it's fairly straightforward as far as similar triangles and proportion. Now on the internet you see a lot of uh, information about mil dot reticles and how to use a mil dot reticle to do ranging. Uh, there's a special formula for mil dot reticles and that special formula is really just a special case of this generalized formula here which we will be using so again it's the range equals 100 times the height of the target size in inches divided by the subtension value and also divided by the number of subtensions we set up a scale at the 100 yard distance uh, in this case we have a yardstick you could use a tape measure or uh, cloth tape or anything that you can read at a hundred yards now the problem is that with a yardstick you're not going to be able to read it at a hundred yards uh, what we're going to try to do is take the reticle of our scope and measure the distance 
to find one subtension value. Now again, it can either be from the point of here to the middle crosshair or from point to point or even from center crosshair to the point of the horizontal crosshair. But we want to measure this distance. So we align the point of the one crosshair and then we read the distance here. But the problem is you're not going to be able to read this at 100 yards. So we have a special target that we made up for that case. This is the target I use for uh, calibrating the reticles. Uh, there's nothing magical about the target, it's just a scale. Zero here, one inch, one and a half, two inches. Something uh, with lines thick enough that we can see them at 100 yards. Uh, sometimes the crosshair obliterates the line, so I put little V's here to help you get a true zero at this point. Now the idea is that uh, we have to find out the value of one subtension. So we take our scope, set up our target at 100 yards, <clears throat> look through the scope at the highest power. You can really do it for any power, but most times you calibrate at the highest power. And what we do is we take the center crosshair of the scope, align it with the zero mark on our uh, calibration target, and then we read where the thick crosshair point is. In this case, it's two and three quarter inches. Uh, that's the value of one subtension. So you can, you can do it from the top if you like. You can come from seven inches uh, and you measure four and a quarter and do the subtraction. You wind up with two and three quarter inches for the subtension value of the six by 24 scope set at this 24 power. And we're going to use that in our formula to uh, arrive at a formula to range with using a duplex reticle. So we've determined that our subtension value is two and three quarter inches, 2.75 inches. So we plug that into our formula here, this formula, we plug 2.75 inches here, and we get 100 times H divided by 2.75 divided by number of subtensions. We simplify that formula by dividing 2.75 into 100 and we get 36.3 times H divided by the number of subtensions. That's our formula for that particular reticle at 24 power on our scope. Now we can check our formula we know that our object at 100 yards is two and three quarter inches, and it took one subtension to measure that. Uh, if we took an object at 100 yards and put our scope on it, in this case, it would take one plus a half subtension units to measure this thing. In this case, the number of subtensions would be 1.5, and we would put 1.5 in here. But in our case, we measured 2.75 inches in one subtension, and so we used the number 1 here. So we plug in 36.3 is our formula, times the height of the object at 100 yards, 2.75 inches, divided by one subtension, and we come out to 99.8 yards, which is approximately 100 yards. Well, we, doesn't, we don't arrive at it exactly because this 36.3 is rounded off. And that's our formula for this particular scope. Range equals 36.3 times the height of the object in inches divided by the number of subtensions. Now here is an example of how you use your reticle to determine a range to an object. In this case, we have a deer that we see through the scope. And we know that a typical deer, a large deer, is maybe 17 inches from the bottom of the belly to the top of the back. So we take our reticle, our scope, turn it up to 24 power, we put 
the center crosshair at the bottom of the belly of the deer and we read how many subtension values it takes to reach the top of the deer. In this case, from here to here is about half the distance from here to here. So let's say that the subtension value on this animal is a half or 0 0.5. So we come over and we use the formula. The formula is R equals 36.3 times H divided by the number of subtensions. In this case, the number of subtensions is a half, 0 0.5, because the body of the deer subtends only one half of our one subtension value. So using that, we plug that into the formula, 36.3 times 17 inches is the height of the object divided by 0.5 and we arrive at 1234 yards. Um, that's how you would use your subtension formula and subtension reticle to get the range of an object that you see through the scope. Okay, so just to clarify this issue of the number of subtensions, uh, this is another example. Now suppose we look through the scope and we see a groundhog standing. A groundhog standing is roughly 10 inches high. So we want to measure him. So we can put the zero here, come up, measure like this, or you can just use from point to point. So let's go from point to point. Let's start at the top of his head. We have one subtension two subtensions, and then a little bit more, say 0 0.08 subtensions. So from top of his head to the bottom is 2.08 subtensions. We plug that into our formula. We get R, the range, equals 36.3 times 10 inches high, divided by 2.08. He's 174.5 yards away. One more example, we look through the scope and we see the, our lovely groundhog again. He's still 10 inches high, he hasn't grown. We look through the scope and this is what we see. So we're gonna try to measure him using the scope. Now he's clearly a lot less than one subtension. If you figure this is a half a subtension, he's maybe two tenths. You can measure from the bottom up. Say he's two tenths subtensions high through the scope at the maximum power, in this case 24 power. So we plug the 2 tenths subtension into the formula, 36.3 times 10 inches high divided by 2 tenths of a subtension and he's 1815 yards away. Surprised that we even see him through the scope at that range. So hopefully now you know how to uh, calibrate the duplex reticle in your scope, um, found the subtension value, whether you're measuring from here to here or from here to here, it depends, that's your preference, and you've developed a formula to allow you to figure out the range, knowing the height of the target and the number of subtensions. Now I usually make up a little tag just like this and put it on the rifle, right on the rifle scope, so that I can remember that my subtension is from here to here. I have different scopes, some of them I use from here to here. So the tag is just a reminder, and then I put the formula on the tag. I also have a tag on the scope for the load that I'm using, and then the ballistic information from the Hornady website which gives me the drop at various ranges of the bullet and uh, wind drift for each 10 mile an hour uh, crosswind. And using all these tags and a little bit of luck, hopefully I hit what I'm aiming for.